Hey everyone, as support players, we all know what it's like to play bot lane babysitter for an ADC like this Jinx. She is a Platinum Jinx main paired up with one of our challenger coaches, who has been challenger for 6 seasons straight and peaked at rank 10 on the ladder. She forces him into a tri brush cheese at level 1 despite the fact that the enemy team, if they leash, will have an insanely strong Olaf right there to join the fight. Sure enough, Not looks for a quick trade then wants to leave before Olaf arrives, but Jinx walks the wrong direction and ends up dying, then types this. Ah, the joys of support. If you want to know how our challenger support players such as Abu, the 6 time challenger peak rank 10 Nautilus we just saw, or Rhino starting support for Team Liquid's academy team carry games in gold and platinum elo despite bad ADCs, then be sure to stick around. To start, we want to identify that there are two different types of bad ADCs. First, we have the fellas who are trying. They're doing their best, but it's just not going very well. Then we have the tilters, the flamers, the inters like the jinx from earlier. We're going to play around these two categories differently, so it will be important that you can identify which is which in a non-emotional way. Anyway, let's start by talking about how to manage a bad ADC during the lane phase and hopefully drag them to relevancy in the game. First up, let's talk wave management. This is obviously something that the ADC ultimately has more control over than you do, but in our experience, it is crucial that you, as the support player, still have a very, very good grasp on proper wave management and attempt to guide your lane partner in a good direction. This game here with another one of our challenger coaches, Japanese Import, is excellent proof that this can work. He's currently paired with a Platinum 4 Vein main piloting Draven, potentially not the most level-headed player. After roaming and picking up a pretty random kill early on, he runs back to the lane as the third wave, the first cannon one, arrives. What should be done with this wave here? Take a few seconds to think. If you send a hard shove as fast as possible, then instantly recall, that's absolutely correct. But as we can see, Draven isn't really autoing or trying to push. So obviously he's not quite on the same page about this great opportunity for a cheater recall. But with Nautilus having two Targon stacks and leveling up E at level 2, he's able to pretty much push quickly by himself with a little bit of help from Draven. Had he had less to offer in the pushing department, he may have needed to ping or type, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. Then notice how before the wave even has a chance to push to tower, he already backs out and starts recalling, pinging Draven once he walks to tower, resulting in Draven very reluctantly joining him in the correct play. The duo returns to lane plenty early to catch the wave bouncing back to them from the tower. What would you try to get Draven to do from here? Though right now you want to set up a freeze, completing the beautiful maneuver of the cheater recall that you've probably seen a lot lately. With a flashless Jinx and Xerath up against Nautilus Draven, pulling them to us in lane by freezing, where we'll have plenty of room to engage and fight, is an obvious choice. But Draven instantly starts to spam out of the wave and clearly, once again, isn't on the same page. In response to this, Nautilus Danger pings the wave two times, then types out Freeze. Thankfully, once again, Draven is allowing himself to be pulled to the correct choice, and they are able to pull the wave and freeze, leading instantly to another kill with the gank. This entire sequence of events with the Cheater Recall was orchestrated by Nautilus with his Draven having no clue what they were doing or why. So it is very possible to work an ADC who doesn't really understand what to do with the wave into the right decision, so you should be learning and understanding as much as you can about wave control. But it's not always that simple, right? We already are seeing the comments in our minds, and you're obviously right. Your ADC will not always listen. Sometimes you'll get the Jinx, sometimes you'll get the Draven. The important thing is that you have the knowledge of what to do and try to communicate it in the best way possible. For this, we met up with our challenger supports and talked about the best ways to communicate with your ADC for increased odds at success. And there are, of course, two ways to communicate with your ADC, pings and typing. For pings, we really, really, really recommend a max of two pings at a time, ideally just one. Overpinging is the fastest way to annoy your ADC and ruin any chances of him listening to you in the future. As for typing, we would recommend actually not doing exactly what we saw Japanese import do just now. Instead, we suggest slapping some question marks on what you say to make it seem like a suggestion rather than a command. Abu also said that he would maybe go as far as saying something like this, which is fine if you have the time to type. 
Basically, if you've ever tried telling your jungler where to gank, you know full well that giving your teammates commands is a very good way to get the opposite result. If you're being really respectful, really nice, and they still don't listen, that's just on them and there's nothing you can do. You try. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, a sub to the channel would be incredible. All right, beyond trying to coerce your ADC into proper wave management, another tip that we have comes from the game earlier with Abu on Nautilus. This is what he describes as a one option play, which is something he tries to do while playing in low elo. Jinx didn't have anything else to do other than hit Thresh, right? There weren't minions to last hit, Nautilus was blocking any skill shots, etc. Jinx only had one choice, and it was close to impossible to mess up. Trying to find these super obvious, simple trades rather than more complex, risky ones might help your struggling ADC to do their job. Another thing you can try to do is only look for trades or engages when threatening abilities have already been used. For example, in this game that we'll look at later from Rhino here on Bard, technically his Ezreal shouldn't be super threatened by Thrash as long as he's saving his E and reacting decently. But Rhino learns early on that this Ezreal isn't a super smart player, so any engagement could end in his death. So whether it's a Thresh Hook, Morgana Q, or any of these other threatening abilities, you might need to wait for these to be down before initiating a trade, even if they technically should be outplayable when your ADC is iffy. This will just limit how much you can be punished if the engagement is misplayed. Finally, it's important that you pay attention to your ADC's body language and adapt to how the lane is going, not how it should be going. If your ADC is just sitting way back and clearly not interested in fighting or doing anything proactive, even if you have the matchup where you should be doing that, don't force anything. Adapt to their playstyle while you're stuck in lane, which brings us to the next topic. There's obviously another big question that we need to answer here, which is, when do I just abandon ship and start roaming, supporting other more worthy teammates? And that's a totally fair question and is sometimes necessary. It's also going to be very situational, but we'll try to give you two big guidelines here. First, it's very rarely worth abandoning ship before you hit level 6. Of course, you can look for a roam earlier than that, but then you'll want to return bot lane and continue to get both XP and work on your support item. Secondly, ask yourself, is there someone else on my team worth playing around? This can influence how soon you'll want to leave lane or whether it's even worth it or not. For example, in the Jinx lane from earlier, Abu's mid laner, the Katarina, was doing really well and already fed. So off his next reset, he ran mid with her, helping her to get priority as well as vision around the mid lane and eventually finding a really good fight with her. Then he ran right back to the mid lane, ganking for her yet again. He resets and right clicks mid. He has completely shifted his priority because he has a teammate worth playing around and we can hear him discussing this live in his commentary of the game. Notice how my Jinx is doing really poorly, so I kind of give up on playing with her. Like, yeah, I still need to pay attention to her and make sure, like, if I can be with her, I should. Like, right now, if I'm with her, what am I going to be doing? Like, farming Gromp? That's not going to be doing anything. So what I would rather do is play with that 9-1 Katarina, and now I know if I queue in, we're going to get kills. But remember, he also waited until he was level 6 and had very nearly finished his support item to change his playstyle. And we saw a similar thing in the bar game. Let's hear from Pocket himself. Free tire across the map. Can I hit six, please? I'm just waiting to hit six so I can leave. Thank you. He obviously is not having a blast in the lane and wants to leave. But once he realizes he's too late to the play, though, he just runs back bottom. The fact that he's barred with Mobies makes this kind of in between hover playstyle more realistic. Notice how, in both of these replays, we're not making an emotional choice to just ditch our ADC. We're just trying to make and look for winning plays. Abu was still checking up on Jinx to see if he could provide value by being with her, and Rhino ran back bottom after realizing he was too late. And as a final note about roaming, if you're not playing someone as mobile or long-ranged as Bard, leaving like this when a fight is already going will often just be a waste of time. In this game, Abu is on Lulu and sees Kha'Zix moving to their Krux and moves before the play happens. This allows him to arrive in time to actually impact the play with a super successful roam. This takes way more skill than just seeing a play in progress and moving. You'll need to be watching the map constantly and predicting what will happen, but the skill will make you a far more effective roamer. So always try to think of what's going to happen next instead of simply reacting. One other thing that we want to mention about this time where you're kind of leaving your ADC behind, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't ward for them if you have time as long as they aren't super tilted and are still trying and will be using your wards effectively. If you have some downtime, like if the fed member that you're playing around is resetting, you can drop one to two wards for them so they can farm safely. 
However, we recommend saving any vision denial for making proactive plays later. This vision near your ADC can actually be quite useful, allowing you to quickly make proactive plays if you see enemy champions collapsing on them. Before we jump into itemization, you should know where these videos come from. Our hyper improvement platform, Skillcapped, is by far the best place to be if you want to actually improve at League of Legends. You can input your rank before signing up to see where we think you'll climb to. If you don't reach that rank while actively using Skillcapped, you can claim a full refund. That's like a gym membership guaranteeing that you'll get ripped. We offer this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't, then you shouldn't pay for it. So be sure to check us out after this. All right, let's quickly talk about itemization. This one won't change all that much if your ADC is bad, but it can change the value of certain items in some situations. Here are some items that gain value and some that lose value. But obviously, if you have good targets other than your ADC for Knight's Vow or Zeke's, then that's totally fine. Beyond that, the biggest general tip that we can give you for playing with a bad ADC is to keep your mental. This will be the most important time to not get tilted if you're serious about winning and climbing. Try to keep thinking about who on your team is doing well, what win condition you have, etc. If you can keep yourself from spam pinging your ADC, which will only tilt you more as well as them, and just focus on what you can do and can control, that will give your team a fighting chance. Also, as our last note for this video, we want to say that it took us a massive amount of games to find smurf replays with bad ADCs to see how a challenger responds. Our challenger supports almost never ever had to deal with struggling marksmen because they're just carrying the lane. So if you feel like this is an issue that you're encountering constantly, we promise there are lots of things you could be doing to improve the performance of your ADC in almost every game. As hard as it might be, if you're truly focused on climbing, looking at your own plane, what you could do will always be your most effective course of action. And that's going to do it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.